So everybody in, in one sense, basically, I don't have anything against any, any principal, anyone that you pick here. But we have some principal, assistant principals in our system that have multiple years in it. And I think it's only right and fair that we as a school system tell them what they need to do to improve their sale or why they have it when they've been putting in time after time after time. <coughs> I've had close to 250 calls in the last day and a half. Uh, just state, and, and not all just for one person, not all uh, for quite a few. Some that, that I don't even know about, didn't even know about. But, the, where, I, where I'm coming to, we've got a couple that's got 10 to 12 years that parents love, teachers love, man and woman, women. How on, I uh, mean, I look at it this way, that if the teacher likes the principal and your kid, children like the principal, and the parents like the principal, you don't have but one way to go, and that, and, and you're going up. You're not going to come down. It's just like if you're going to a church, and, and you don't like the preacher, there ain't nobody going to be happy, and you're going to have to go somewhere else. <coughs> uh, are we giving our people that have proven themselves as assistant principals a fair chance over people with just one or two for three years experience. Well, and, I, and I'll speak very quickly to that. Um, you know, go back to the way I answered Mr. Harris's question. It is a very difficult process. It is a challenging process. We we are fortunate in Cleveland County to have lots of great folks. Um, and when we look, our team looks at the, 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 the ideal and the best candidate that's the best fit in those positions. And our team, uh, I can assure you, spends lots of time interviewing and working through that to get the very best for Cleveland County and those individual schools. Um, Mr. Harris, one of the things that I left out of the process that we used, and, and I think this was an important process, is that I went and visited the, the three schools that we had open to interview the staff uh, and look for what they were looking for. Uh, I, I, uh, I went to the schools and I interviewed the staff. Um, I took a note taker with me so I could really listen and, and have somebody take notes. Uh, but really interviewed the staffs and, and asked them what they're looking for in principal. What do you th what do they think their strengths were? What do you think the weaknesses were? What, what are they looking for as principal? The principal of this school should be what? And really tried to get some really good feedback from the school. That way when we made recommendations, we made decisions, we, we were able to align those things. Uh, so I, I felt like that was a good process. I've had lots of positive feedback uh, from our team, um, but as well as from the schools. I've gotten several emails and calls from the schools saying appreciate you uh, giving us a little bit of an input. Uh, that still you know, makes it a difficult decision when we do that uh, because we have lots of qualified candidates. And, you know, Mr. Blank, and again, to quickly answer your question, you know, I, you know that, um, and I've told folks this, uh, my door is always open if people have questions. Uh, you know, I know Dr. Wolf is the same way. Uh, we'll be glad to sit down and talk with folks if they have questions and, and have concerns. But, uh, uh, you know, it, it is a, it's a challenging process. We try to put the best people in the best places. And, and that's why we have the recommendations we have here for tonight. Well, do we have our team? Is it represented all over the whole county? Yes, sir. Dr. Fisher, I was going to make a quick comment. I, I would like to say, I, I think Mr. Glenn did make some pretty good points there. And uh, one point that he made that I agree with wholeheartedly is um, those, those ones who have, you know, a great deal of experience, um, maybe giving them some kind of development, and I think the potential um, academy that we have, the leadership, um, Academy is going to be good for that. And if they are doing something that's not getting them to that next level, maybe, you know, looking at developing them and moving them to that next level. Um, with that being said, um, the three recommendations that I see here, um, and I do I do think we have some strong ones in other places, but these three I think are pretty stellar. Um, you know, just looking at what they're doing, I, and I agree with them. I think this, this is good. That's one of the, that's one of the benefits out of the Academy. That we, we do any other discussion? And, and I would encourage you to, to meet with uh, those candidates who were not successful. I, I know you will. But first administrative job I ever applied for was an assistant principal at Crest Middle School. And I didn't get the job. And it hurt. Uh, Dickie Cornwall was principal then. I asked him if I'd come talk to him about what I could do to make myself 
more marketable, and I was pleased that he sat down and gave me some, some ideas of what I could do to, to make myself a, a, a better administrative candidate. Uh, it, it helped me to become a better administrator, so uh, I, I would encourage you to do that, and I'm pleased that you said you were going to. Mr. Harris, I've already got some of those gifts. Good, that's great. Mr. Chair, just one of the order here. Uh, my contract, your policies and law says that the superintendent makes these recommendations, so I just want to assure you that I concur. I think it's important that Dr. Fisher have an opportunity to start picking the people that are going to be on the team that to be leading, but I concur with these, and so I don't want there to be a, a technical error that, that they're not coming from the superintendent's recommendation. Uh, he's, he's done work with the team, and, and, uh, and I, but I do want you to know I concur with you. And I don't want to cut off any, any further discussion. I'd like to read something if you don't mind. It's contained in this. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to, uh, the board to approve to have a town hall meeting and let teachers, principals, whoever wants to come, come and express <coughs> to us as a board what they would like to see. And I'd like to see this happen before Mr. Uh, before Mr. Fisher actually takes office so that he can be there and, any, and all board members <coughs> don't have it on a board meeting night, have it when there's plenty of time, we've had plenty of time tonight, and let people put input what they would like to see changed in Cleveland County and to make our schools better for our students. Uh, Mr. Blanton, that motion is not, or that suggestion is not on the agenda. So, if, if you would like to put it on the agenda, since we don't have, you know, uh, approve the agenda to start off with, if you can get a second to the motion, if you want to make that motion after like we make voted that on motion. after we voted on this yes. other one, okay. then then uh, and you get a majority vote, then I think that would be acceptable. To uh, we have to vote on the motion. Let's you make the motion. Okay. You make the motion, and then we go from there. Okay. But we have this other motion on the floor. All in favor of the original motion, which I believe approved the uh, three positions as mentioned by Dr. Fisher and the man with the names, say aye. 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 All opposed? No. Thank you, Thank you all. Now, do you prefer to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion to for to have a meeting. Uh, well, you better define the meeting. As you uh, a town hall meeting uh, for the public. All teachers, teachers assistants, principals can all be present. All board, any board member wants to. I'd just like to let uh, them have a chance to give us their input, what they would like to see. Is there a second that? I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? I do. I, you have to help me out. You said you, you want to have a meeting with all these people to find out what they what they want to see. What they want to see what? I'm out of I'm a little lost on this. Let them tell us what they'd like to see changed in our school system to make it better for our students. That that's a pretty good answer right there. I have objection to it myself because I think we have the authority on the board to decide things with input and I don't know a single one of us on the board who don't get calls at home. I haven't had 250 but I've had about 10 or 11 emails and I think I'm available. I will listen, but I won't necessarily agree. And if the requirement for listening is that you agree with everybody who tells you something, I think that's wrong. So I, I, I would not vote for your motion. Any other discussion? I say, I, I said we wouldn't mind having me. I'm, I'm always open for it, as I believe that other board members are. But 
Um, it's not a deal breaker for me. We we have public comment at every meeting, but I would be opposed to Mr. Blanton's suggestion um, to hear any any other comments. And I know that Dr. Fisher probably open that too. He's always able to listen. But um, if the majority of the board wants to go in a different direction, that is a okay with me. I'm, 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 yeah. The thing that kind of concerns me a little bit is they're just you're just saying a meeting. I mean, it's, there's no no guidelines or any rules or anything. Uh, what I would probably like to see a little bit more is may uh, is maybe uh, when Dr. Fisher becomes our superintendent, he has the opportunity to maybe have some of these town hall meetings and go and and, and, and go to these areas in the county. The dog can fit it in. For him to talk and to listen and, and, uh, and have somebody to run these meetings and to get some input from the from the community with Dr. Fisher, and then if we if we need to do something else, maybe have the, the school board participate, or you know school board members can come to those town hall meetings. I think it would be good if Dr. Fisher could <coughs> maybe go and you know do a tour of the county like the governor does a tour of the state and, and, and have that opportunity. To make yourself available, which I, I feel confident that he will make himself available at any time. Well, I just like to see our teachers uh, have an opportunity to speak and not be feared for their jobs. Uh, that that's me. I've heard over and over and over they're feared for their job if they say anything wrong. Well, maybe somebody will step forward and 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 let us know and let Doctor Fisher know. Uh, what uh, what uh, they would like to see and what needs to be changed at our school. We're having absolutely too much turnover. Maybe we're on the state average, but I don't care about the state. I care about Cleveland County. And our teacher's right here. That's who I care about. And I want them to feel like that they're working for the best school district areas in the county. And if anybody faults me for that, I guess I'll get ready to go home. You're fixing a journey anyway. That's the way I feel. Mr. Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm not necessarily opposed to a to a forum, but I, I can't support one that is that is that broad. Where the first person stands up and speaks about buses and bus routes, and the second one speaks about Common Core, and the third one speaks about you know, the, the landscaping around the school, and, and, and just on and on. Uh, forum that is focused on a particular subject like we were you know, when we draw district lines or something. That's that's an appropriate thing to, to do or, or you know whatever whatever a particular subject is, a like better than a free for all uh, forum I, I don't think would be very very productive. And, uh, so it's not the idea of a forum I'm opposed to. It's it's one that is as broad as it is that I don't think would be very productive. I, I would I would agree with Mr. Harris. We have as you, as you said we have internet, I get letters, comments all the time. I see people around the community, they have comments for me. Uh, I get letters, some of them anonymous. Uh, so we get, we're getting input to that topic. But we, and I've suggested we discuss tonight already uh, possibilities of specific areas that we may want to give input on. One of them we mentioned was the uh, act raising the standards for athletics, and we talked about uh, possibly hearing uh, from the public what do they want us to do in that area. So I like the idea of some individual focused meetings where everybody goes to the meeting to talk about one subject and then you can get something worthwhile done. Uh, if you go out and take a broad just complaint about everybody, you get 40 different complaints and nobody sits down and talks about solutions. Complaints are easy, solutions are difficult. And I'd like to have a meeting focus that we talked about buildings. And I suggest that we go with a, some kind of long-range building plan. And I think certainly if we want to have a, a meeting on, on what should our long-range building plans be, I think that's a, a great topic because we're looking for a solution, not just a complaint session. There are plenty of people who want to complain and plenty of people who want to tell you what you're doing wrong. Let's look for people who want to give us some solutions and tell us what to do to change. Okay, solutions on all these resignations we're having at all of these schools. Let's let that be the topic then. And Mr. Harris, uh, would you be willing to have it? Uh, and and let let something like that let or 
let Mr. Fisher uh, direct us. Or if anybody don't want to be Bob, give me the open door that I can have a meeting out here on the street. You know, this this uh, discussion, I think, is good. Uh, I do have some concern. It, it shows somewhat of a disrespect for our new superintendent, who we hired to, and perhaps he may want to come back with the recommendation in terms of how he wants to hold uh, and, and get oh my God. ideas and suggestions and recommendations, you know, from from our staff of 2,300 employees. That's a lot of folks, and. Uh, the other concern is that, you know, when you talk about education, I don't know how you would prioritize these things. Well, education, public education particularly, is multidimensional, is multifaceted. You've got a lot of components of this. You're not just one area, you're not just teacher concerns, discontent. You've got instructional needs, you've got community engagement, you've got graduation requirements, you've got closing gap issues, you've got legislative and governmental affairs, you have teacher assistance, hiring practices, diversity, school reform. Club, which is another important area. I like to put on the table facility needs. And the, the list goes on, and that's how diverse and how multifaceted this business of public education is. You just can't go out and have a free for all. It has no structure, no process, no format. So we have to get more sensible and a little bit more structured. And I would simply suggest that give the superintendent an opportunity to get his program in place and in order, and perhaps he can come back with a structure and format that may be feasible for us to move forward. And finally, I know that there are some issues. This, this um, elephant in the room is this issue of public trust of school board. I like to even put that on the table at some point in time and come back with a way that we can improve and build on that and strengthen that relationship. You know, because again, as I continually emphasize, and you heard me, and I'm probably going to sit there and say this, I want to keep this vision in mind to be the best. And that takes public trust, it takes cooperation, collaboration and support from all of our entities and all of our stakeholders. And that's ultimately where I like to get to. Okay. But, you know, again, let's have some structure. This group all thing is not going to help us get to that vision. Chair, I, I would like to uh, go to the board members to one piece of data. Y'all know I'm data driven. Uh, you may not have had a chance to look at your teacher working and business surveys, but they are out there. Overwhelmingly, teachers indicate that they want to work in Cleveland County School they're pleased to work in the schools there anyway. They feel support from their leaders. Uh, overwhelmingly, teachers are frustrated with state's history, not just in Cleveland County, but in the in the 50 percent range, where we have the 90 percent plus range that want to work here. We have the 50 percent range that are frustrated with testing and the timeliness of testing. That is not the school system's fault. I'll also add that. Yeah, over the last 45 days, I have been greatly concerned, Ms. Blanton, about the teachers who are leaving. The ones I'm concerned about who are leaving are those who are going to Gaffney and Clover and Spartanburg, and there are dozens of them, and they're making $16,000 and $18,000 and $20,000 more per year doing the same job. Long-term teachers who have been in this district for many years, some who have driven from Clover to Cleveland County to teach, and they say they can no longer do, do that because they can make sixteen and eighteen more thousand dollars working right next door at home. They can make double the salaries for coaching. Um, that's not something that this district can fix, you know, in, in Cleveland County. It's something that you're going to have to go out of Cleveland County to fix. You're going to have to go to legislators and others and get their help to fix it. I believe you're the only one who hadn't had any comments. Yeah, I've just been listening to these men, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with my fan going. <laughs> Mr. Yarbrough. <laughs> um, I, I, I totally agree with, with Mr. Hooker and, um, and with the other comments. I am not opposed to, to a public forum. I wouldn't be on the school board if, if I didn't, if I was not willing to listen to people and um, and I think you're all the same. I do have a problem if all we're going to listen to are complaints. And I 
do have a problem, Mr. Blanton. I, know, I understand that, that there are teachers that, and, and employees that say that they're afraid for their jobs if they voice their, their opinion. I, I've heard that for years. I don't know, though, that by offering a, a public forum, if that's going to make them feel any more comfortable. I mean, if they're afraid to, to tell us how they really feel, are they going to stand up in public and say that for fear of their job? Although, they should not fear for their jobs because I don't know of a teacher that has lost their job because they voiced their opinion. Maybe some have, but I, I'm not aware of any. But I do think that it's good to, to listen to people in a structured forum. I agree, Mr. Hooker, that it's showing disrespect to, to Dr. Fisher. And Danny, honestly, I, you know, this is June 9th. He starts July 1. I don't know that we could get something organized in time to do that before he starts. I think that something like that takes some planning, takes some coordination, and, and, and we owe it to the community. If we're gonna do something like that, we owe it to ourselves and the community to, to have it well planned. And I'm glad you brought up the, the working conditions survey. I think that speaks volumes. And, and that is anonymous, correct? We don't know who those employees are that make those comments. So they could say, that they totally, absolutely hate their principal, that they hate the superintendent, we'd never know who they are, right? So, you know, if they don't do those surveys, I'm sorry, that's, that's their fault. That's their chance to anonymously tell us how they really, really feel about the school system. And, and we look at that. The principals look at that. And, and they use that to make changes that, that they feel are needed. So. I don't disagree with you. Well, I, but, I, I, I mean, you, you got opinion just do. like I have. And, well, but you but know, I just want to change the day of the that, people out here exactly. that we're doing what, uh, in other words, as a board, that if, if we let them have some input, maybe they'll get some trust in us that we're, that we're going to do the right job. I think we've got to vote on the motion whether to allow. All in favor of allowing Mr. Blank to make his motion. What well, board, Mr. Chair? The, the, the motion and the budget is already discussed. Yeah, the motion is on the floor. It, it, right. And seconded by Johnny. All right, let's yeah. on the motion. Yes, sir. And, and the motion is to have a public forum before July 1st. Is that it? Well, you said the I said it. I'd like to see it. And then Mr. Fisher would have uh, some input from what they say. Uh, and and I think he would uh, he would like it. Uh, one, one more, could you restate the motion, Mr. Blank, so we can be sure what we're voting on? Uh, that we have a, a town hall meeting or a public forum uh, for the uh, public uh, teachers, anybody who wants to, to uh, can we can have a meeting, not on a regular board meeting night, uh, that we have plenty of time and they can come and speak out what they would like to see changing in our schools. What they would like to see. And no further discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? No. no. Let's raise our hands. All in favor?